Peggy 18. Hey everybody, Zachary Levi here in downtown San Diego at Comic-Con, more specifically at Nerd HQ, which is the epicenter of all things Tomb Raider. The anticipation is building as the team from Crystal Dynamics continues to say that this could be the game of their careers. Today we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the story with some of the key writers and designers who are brave enough to tackle the origin stories of Lara Croft. These are the final hours of Tomb Raider. We're in downtown San Diego. We're at Nerd HQ. Fans, the public, will get to play the game for the first time ever. Are you nervous? This is the most nervous time of the entire game. This is huge for us. This is the first time we're giving anybody the opportunity to put their hands on the game. It's not finished yet. It's hard to, to send it out into the world like yeah. that. It's a little young, it's a yeah. little fresh. When you put it in the public's hands, you're getting a very raw, unfiltered, like, hey, this is what we love and this is what we don't. You'll start to read about it now. You'll start to see it online. You'll start to get people's perspectives. We're making sure that we make it the best thing that we can for the fans. And these are the fans. Why make an origin story? You could just kind of continue with the Lara Croft Tomb Raider saga. But you didn't. Why? We didn't start with the idea of doing an origin story, actually. We started with the idea of doing something fresh. There haven't been very many games that have the opportunity to go back and tell a true origin story. There is very few games like this. In the history of the Tomb Raider franchise, there has not been a female lead writer until now. Rihanna Pratchett. For me, I didn't think of it like we needed a female writer to do that. Rihanna just nailed it. Rihanna Pratchett. Yeah. Does it take a woman to know a woman? It probably helps, but I don't kind of think about it as much as everyone else does. So I tend to think of myself as being a writer first. There is some of me in her, absolutely. She's very bookish, she's very in her head. I went to public school, I actually learned archery. Um, she as well, I heard. That we bring up our ladies properly. Um, <laughs> and I, I genuinely studied Egyptology. I wanted to be an Egyptologist. No way. You know, I've always been a huge fan of, of kick-ass females. I mean, I yeah. grew up on Terminator and aliens, yeah. you know, fighting aliens in the future. I thought that was what girls did. It's great to be here at Comic-Con. This is my first time. People are really responding to this, this kind of new Lara. The fans have been great. They've been very supportive. I want to kind of live up to their expectations. I grew up going to fantasy and science fiction conventions. Now here I am looking at a Tomb Raider poster on the side of a building for a Tomb Raider game I have written. Can't quite process that, but it's very cool. Lara's actions affect her character and her emotional state, and so the first kill for us was a big thing. It's not comfortable to watch, and it, and it shouldn't be. Oh, God! And it is about picking yourself up, despite the fact that you're scared. You can't have bravery without fear. In video games, you're kind of tweaking all the way down to delivery. Yeah. Blessing or curse? Games development can be um, quite harsh on narrative. You know, you, you can lose levels or characters. You have to be amazingly flexible. When is the script finally finished? You get insight when you see it through your audience's eyes. Yeah. So once the story gets to a point where we can start sharing with people, where we can start putting it on the screen, then we start to understand, are people getting from it what we want them to get from it? The feedback is that it's really fulfilling our primary goals of delivering a story that introduces people to a Lara Croft, but also just takes them on an amazing adventure. John Stafford, you're kind of the, the dialogue typist, uh, <laughs> word monkey. The words that you've been speaking for yes. so long yes. are so from this man. Everything that I've been through that's been extremely emotionally draining and painful, I have him to blame for. <laughs> so we'll have words later about it. What were the challenges stepping into the heart and mind of a character like Lara Croft, who we've known for quite some time? Yes. Players of expectation is. You want to just jump right yeah, in, guns yeah. blazing. Controller, I'm, you know, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. We want that. That's what video games basically allow yeah, gamers right? to yeah. feel. I am awesome. Challenge for me is to show her vulnerable. Be shipwrecked on an island inside the dragon's triangle. Still have a very playable game, 
that also show real emotional character. It's very difficult to do that in game. Please come and get me. You can do this, Laura. When you have really extreme circumstances, you have really extreme emotions. What the hell? It's all about her survival. She's basically willing to do whatever it takes. There's people trying to kill you. Um, you know, things are really extreme. Listen, I'm gonna get you out of there. I promise. I promise that. I didn't want any lines to sound gamey. There was a good collaboration of making sure that really that didn't happen. That's very difficult writing, you know. How do you Mm. write a line that isn't just like I should go there yeah, you, know? <laughs> yeah. you know I mean that's I bet there's something hidden in that crate <laughs> yeah. I want you to love this game in a way that that really feels like the first time you played it but do it in a way that people have never seen before for me it's it's crazy not to to look at this as as an opportunity to really start that dialogue this is the game of our careers this truly is the first time to sort of say okay this is it well, now that we know a bit more about what it takes to reimagine an icon from the ground up, we're headed east to go behind the sounds of Lara's journey. A journey that is heightened and shaped by cinematic score and sound design. I hope to see you on the next episode when we talk to who's behind what we're hearing in Tomb Raider.